Blender for Noobs. Hello and welcome to part three of the secrets of Blender modeling. In this section of the tutorial we're going to look at blocking the model. So we're going to be creating just the basic shapes of the model. So it's going to turn off this layer here so we don't see our lines in there. And I'm going to turn on my screencast keys. So any clicks with a mouse or keyboard strokes that I do will show up in this area here on the bottom left. And I'm just going to go File, Save As, and I'm going to change this to V3 for version 3. And this will be the blocking. And just save that. Okay, so why do we block out models when we first start to model something, especially something of this complexity? Um, anytime you like model something with a lot of parts, um, something that's going to be a pretty big project, you want to block it out. The reason we do that is basically we want to get our main pieces of the model in there so that we have the scale correct. Uh, we will know exactly where the pieces are going to be in the 3D space. It will help us to visualize what the model is going to look like. And it can also point out some potential problems that we might run into while we're uh, creating the model. Now when we block this out, I'm not going to do any blocking for the detail pieces here. I'm just going to do basically the uh, this fuselage section, looking section and the solar panels. So it should be pretty simple. I'm just going to do a Shift A and go to Mesh and create the cylinder. And with the cylinder I'm going to T in my tools menu, come down here to the options and change the cap field type to nothing. So it'll be open there. So right now in my top view, I really want this area up here to be the top and this uh, long ways to be the side. So for this I'm going to do a RX 90, rotate 90 degrees along the X axis. And to try to mimic the relative scale of this, I'm just going to SY, scale on the Y axis. And I'm going to say it's probably something like that long. So on mine about four units. I'm going to tab in edit mode, do a control R to do edge loops. And I'm going to move my mouse wheel up to create two edge loops. Click again to click off of them and then SY to scale them along the Y and move them about right there. Going to do another control R edge loop, mouse up once, click off of those and SY scale them probably about right there. And that just denotes the front part, this kind of break there, the middle part, the break there, and the end part. So for the front part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Alt to select all these vertices and just scale it down. And maybe bring it back a little bit like that. Same thing for the back. Not quite the same thing, but similar. Alt select that, scale it down, and bring it back. Of course, on the back side of this model, the other side of this model, we'll never see. We, we don't know what that looks like. So we're going to be really using our own artist discretion on what's, you know, what's going to be there when we go to model that section. And we have to think about, too, about what kind of ship this is. I mean, when I look at this ship or craft or space station or whatever you want to call it, I really look at it as more like a stationary sort of a space station that, that orbits the Earth and doesn't really go anywhere. But having said that, I think I'm going to go ahead and put something on the back like uh, some sort of um, exhaust, rocket exhaust, or something like that. I don't know yet. I'm going to see when I get there. But we'll see what happens. And like I say, you know, as we go along, you're always free to make any changes that you want that you think it should be rather than, you know, following completely either the image or what I'm doing. So that's our basic um, hull object there. So now we need to create the, um, the solar panels. So I'm just going to go in 7 top view, shift A and create a cube and just going to bring it out about right there go to one front view S 
C to scale it along the Z. And we want to scale down quite thin. And then 7 SY to scale along the Y. Again, make it quite thin. And I'm going to imagine that the solar panel actually comes out of the pretty much the center, top center, but on the front it actually looks like it's lower. So I'm just going to bring it down to maybe like right there. Of course, we can always change this later. And tab into edit mode on it. And I'm going to B box select or vertices. And I just want to bring this out a little bit further. Kind of hard to know exactly how long it is, but probably something like this. A, deselect, and tab back in object mode. And we have the one on the other side, but the easy way, of course, to do that is just mirror it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a Shift A and create an empty. And just use a plain axis empty. Now this isn't a big secret, but it's one of those nice things to know in Blender. If you create an empty, and I'm going to come over to my outliner here, control click in here, and just name this empty underscore mirror, because I'm going to use this empty as a mirror, as a, as a reference to mirror objects. So when I select this and go to my modifiers, add modifier, add the mirror modifier, and instead of uh, telling it to just mirror along one of these axes. I can mirror it by an object. I'm going to choose this. I can choose my empty mirror and then immediately I have it where I need it to be as long as you have it set on the x-axis. Of course you can set it other ways that you need it but for this purpose of course it needs to be on the x. So that is basically it. I mean when we look at it and try to get it in the same angle we can kind of see if it's close or not to our actual image over here. And I think for right now, just for blocking it in, of course it's close enough. Of course, we're gonna, as we go along, we're going to be making changes. But this will work for now. And like I said, I'm not going to block out any of these details, but if you do want to just give yourself an idea of where those are going to be, you can use just cubes to kind of do the outline of the blocking uh, for the details. Like this area right here would be a cube, and then maybe this over here would be a cube, just to get the general idea of where these will be, but I don't really think it's necessary for, for what we're doing right now. So that's it for blocking. I'm going to go ahead and do a control S to save. And just one more final thing that I'm going to do on in this section, and that is actually set up the um, camera and the lighting in order to take images of this. Now why would I do that this early in the game? Well the same reason that I save these in different version steps. Um, if you ever need to go back and start from a different point on the model, and in fact I've done models where I've got to maybe version 3 of the model, um, I was designing some sort of vehicle and when I got to that, that point I thought, you know, I could make this a completely different vehicle just by making a few changes. So it's really nice to be able to go back to something you worked on from, you know, sort of like a snapshot in time and then just make it something completely different than what you were originally making. Um, that's one reason. The other reason is it's really nice to have a visual record of the progression of your model. I really like, you know, once I'm done with a model to be able to set up kind of a slideshow sort of thing where I can look at each render that I've taken and see the progression as it's, as it's come along. So that's what I'm going to do. The first thing we need to do is create a camera. I already have one here, but if you don't have one, just do a Shift A and create a camera here. And once you have your camera, you need to get it into position. And for mine, I'm just going to select mine and come over to this window here and just do a um, Control Zero, and that will show your camera view. And mine is already set up pretty good where I can see my model. Good uh, perspective view there, so I'll just leave it right there. And the idea is that I'm going to keep this camera in the same view as I progress throughout the different uh, versions of the model. That way you're only seeing the model progress and not the camera moving around. Now, of course, we can add different cameras and take different shots from different angles later on if we need to. 
So once you have your camera in place, I'm going to do a Shift A and create a plane, so a mesh plane, and just do a seven top view on the numpad. S to scale it out, and just going to scale it way out so that it covers the uh, area the camera's covering. And to zoom in here, and I want to make sure it's just below this model. So right about there. And basically what this is is sort of a backdrop so we can get some shadowing in there and everything. Now of course this being a spaceship it's not going to have any shadowing underneath it you know reflecting off of some surface it's not going to be sitting on a surface but for our early render views it's nice to have something like that that will show up in the render. So over here in the outliner I'm just going to rename this backdrop or you can name it floor or whatever you want to name it there. Then I'm going to do a shift A, create another plane and I'm going to bring this up 7, scale it out maybe scale on the Y a little bit and this will be a lamp. So with our lamp selected I'm just going to go in one front view and just rotate this at an angle maybe bring it over here and come over to the outliner, control click in here, and I'm going to call this lamp 1 because we'll probably have other lamps as we go along. I'm going to come over to the materials, do a new material, and I'm going to call the same thing lamp 1. And change the diffuse to emission. And we'll just make this like a 2.5 in strength. Change the color. I'm just going to change this to a sort of just a little bit of a light blue tinge just to give it some color when we render. And the other thing we want to do while the lamp is selected, you can see how it's getting in the camera view. So we, we don't want the camera to see it. So we need to go into the object proper, properties, go to, down to ray visibility, and just turn off the camera so the camera doesn't see it. The other things that we need to check and set up before we render is basically the render settings. So uh, anybody who's familiar with my tutorials knows that I use exclusively Cycles Render. I do not use the Blender Render internal engine. Um, so you want to make sure you're on Cycles. And you probably already know this, but just very, very quickly to go over it, if we go to File Preferences, User Preferences, go into our System Settings, you want to make sure that your compute device is set for your graphics card. Hopefully you have an NVIDIA card that will render and use the CUDA CUDA setting. Um, that is pretty much a necessity for Blender. If you don't have an NVIDIA card and you're serious about working with Blender and using the Cycles Render Engine, then that is definitely something you, you'll want to have. Not 100% a necessity for this tor tutorial. You can use a different graphics card, but um, just be aware that NVIDIA works best with Blender or Blender works best with NVIDIA. Okay, once you have your graphics card set up there, we go over to the render settings here, and you will want to make sure that your device is set on GPU compute. And again, if you don't have that NVIDIA card, you can render with a CPU, it's just going to be slower. And once that is set up, uh, you, you'll want to set up your dimensions on your resolution. For these test renders and, you know, all the way up to until the final render, I use pretty much 1280 by 720, just a good all-around HD uh, resolution. And then for sampling, if we come down to the settings here, I have my samplings, uh, the render settings on 100, preview settings on 10, and to start out with, that's fine. It'll give us a nice quick render, and at least we'll be able to have some idea, you know, what it's looking like. The other thing you want to look at here is your performance. Scroll down here. And it really depends on your graphics card and, and your render, your computer settings, and a lot of different things here. But as far as the tiles that it's rendering, I found that 128 by 128 seems to give a pretty good uh, middle of the road um, render where it actually does affect the speed of your render if you change this. So, you can play around with different settings on this. I think the default might be 64 by 64, but uh, this is what I found to be 
a nice optimal setting. Okay, so we're ready to render. I'm just going to hit F12. And there we have it. And you'll notice it only took uh, me really 36 seconds, which is really too long for something simple like this. So you'll notice on every render that I do, I'm going to speed it up for you so you don't have to wait around for my slow computer to get finished rendering that screen. And I'm just going to go to Image, Save as Image, and I'm going to come over to my directory here, and I'm going to, I'm going to make a new directory called Screenshots. Hit Enter, create the new directory. And I basically just name this as far as uh, the actual name of the version that I'm on. So I'm just going to call this Ber Berkey underscore spacecraft v3. And if I happen to do more uh, images under the same version, I'll have v3a, v3b, something like that. Okay, so this is the basic blocking that we're starting out with. Extremely simple to begin with. And as we go on, it'll get a little bit, little bit more complex. So in part four, what we'll be doing is starting to do the basic modeling on the hole here.